Hi, I'm Paul Perdue, and I'm the infrastructure nerd. And I'm Mary Jo Boyd, a legal technologist. You know, one of those topics that's near and dear to my heart is marketing using the contact file and practice master. And you know, it can really do a lot more than what people think it can do. Sure, because Practice Master is so customizable. You can change things around. You can you can add the stuff you need to make your marketing program work. That's awesome. Can you show us how to do that? I sure can. Okay, so marketing in Practice Master is actually pretty easy if you have the right amount of imagination and just a, a tinge of nerdiness. Um, and I say that because the contact record for Paul. I'm on a special that I've added mailing list. I have added fields. And these fields allow me to introduce into that record certain things we want to touch him with marketing wise. In other words, we want him to get the announcement. We want him to be invited to the party. We want him to get the Thanksgiving card and we want him to get the newsletter. He's not interested in, in women in, in business. We don't send him a birthday card. And he's not an estate planning uh, client, so we're not sending him the estate planning letter. We also have these things over here that we call areas of interest, uh, usually when we implement this for a client, that allow you to say, okay, when we're sending a newsletter, what areas of interest, what newsletters are we sending to Paul Purdue? And in this example, we're sending him newsletters or news flashes, if you will, because this can be done at any time or on a regular planned basis about construction and asbestos defense. So these are Paul's areas of interest and newsletter is checked. So he's getting that newsletter. He's also getting the Thanksgiving card, the party announce, uh, invitation, and the announcements of new lawyers, you know, super lawyers, things like that. Now, a couple things come into play here with these tangible things. Uh, a, he has been selected to receive these. But B, we're allowed to decide what address to use and how to address him. These are called address and name overrides. If we go back to Paul's record, we'll see that his default address is probably, let's say, his business address. But that doesn't, and his default name is Paul Purdue. You can see that up here by the contact ID. But that doesn't mean that's where we want to send everything that we send to him. And that doesn't mean that's how we want to address him when we're doing these things. So in this example, when the new lawyer and super lawyer announcements go out, they are going to his business address and they're being addressed to Paul Purdue at staff at that address. When we invite Paul to the party, it's going to his home address. And instead of going to Paul Purdue, it's going to Barb and Paul Purdue. When we send him the Thanksgiving card, it's going to his other address. Uh, hopefully that's someplace in Florida, and it's being addressed simply to Paul and Barb. And when we send him the newsletters, it's going to his business address and it's going to Paul Purdue. That's part of the secret of how we use marketing or use the contact file in Practice Master to do marketing. Uh, one of the big stumbling blocks that people get into when they do this is, what address do we send stuff to? Well, we define that when we define what it is that they're doing. Now keep in mind, these things here, maybe you don't have a party. Maybe you send a Christmas card instead. Maybe you send a New Year's card. These are all very flexible. These areas of interest are all very flexible, okay? They're set up by you. And that's where I said a tinge of nerdiness and a little bit of imagination. You need to think up what your areas of interest are that would be significant to your people that you're marketing to. You need to know what tangible items you have. Do you send announcements? Do you have a party? Do you have Thanksgiving cards? Maybe you have another tangible item. Maybe at Christmas you send out poinsettias or small tins of popcorn or large tins of popcorn. So you might have Christmas gift. You might have the checkbox. You might have where it goes. You might have how it's addressed. And you might have another box out here that uh, drop down that lets them select which gift that person should get. It's also important to identify the people that are responsible for marketing to Paul Purdue. Who cares that Paul Purdue is invited to the party or that he gets a Thanksgiving card? It could be one person and it could be multiple people. We have other ways of doing this. This is a way that we do it at one client. Here's another client where we actually just have a box and we separate those initials, those attorney initials with a slash. 
okay? So what this means is we're able to say, these people care about marketing to Paul Purdue. Therefore, when we print a list of who we're sending Christmas cards to, whose list should they appear on? In this example, MPC and JDE would both get Paul Purdue on their list of who they're sending a Christmas card to, uh, a holiday card in this instance. Now, I wanted to also switch over here to show you a couple other things. We had this over there. Uh, we called it Do Not Mail. Here we call it Never Send Anything. Um, this is the This Guy's a Jerk checkbox. And this means that we can say Paul Purdue's a jerk and we're never going to send him any marketing information again because we don't want to. That way, if a new attorney joins the firm, finds Paul Purdue in the contact system and says, oh, we're not sending him a holiday card, we should, the system has an override to say, no, we shouldn't. And we should, you know, we should make sure that we never send him anything again because we don't, we don't like Paul Purdue. This is one specifically for this client, can't send gifts. This client happens to deal with the healthcare industry. And in some instances, it's illegal or at least unethical to send gifts. Okay, so they wanted to mark contacts as being people that they couldn't send gifts. That's not why I brought you over to this other screen at this other client. So I wanted to show you this. We call this perishable marketing. We developed it for this client, and we've done it for several after. These people happen to have a golf club membership, tickets to the Cleveland Cav Cavaliers, season tickets, and they have a, a play series that they have tickets for in Playhouse Square in Cleveland. So we are able to identify that Paul Purdue, obviously I'm pretty boring because I'm not interested in golf or sports or theater. But if I were interested in having, uh, occasionally getting to go to Cavs games, uh, we could indicate so here. And then we can indicate when the last time is that we invited him. Now these people decided that the perishable nature had to do with inviting, not attending. But when you're dealing with something that's perishable like this, you want to keep track of either the last person that this person that last time that this person was invited, or the last time that they attended, because they may have been invited but not been able to have gone to the game, or both. So this is an example of what I call or what we call perishable marketing, golf club memberships. If it's Saturday coming up and nobody's going golfing and we want to invite somebody to go golfing, we better do it because Saturday will go away. If there's a Cleveland Cavaliers game coming up this Friday night, that will perish. Saturday, those tickets will be no good. If there's a play coming up on a Saturday afternoon, the matinee, uh, that will be no good Saturday night. So this is perishable marketing, and this is an example of the tangible marketing that we had before, where you do things. You send out marketing information or newsletters. You send out announcements. You send out holiday cards. That's it. That's marketing in practice, Master. And, and I, I can't stress enough the imagination part, because we didn't have this at all when we approached this client, although we had already done this work for this client. And they came to us and they said, well, we have Cleveland Cavaliers tickets and we have this and we have that. We have the theater tickets. We have the golf club membership. And so we used our imagination and we came up with a way to have Practice Master handle the marketing for that. Maybe someday you'll come up with something that we've never done before and we'll put our heads together and we'll use our imagination to use marketing for that particular thing. So there you have it, marketing with the context file and Practice Master. And that's just one more way that we can help you to worry less and practice more. Thank you.